The following podcast was recorded on Tuesday, November 1st, 2022, featuring Jim Bianco of Bianco Research. To hear the podcast in real time, you can sign up for a free trial at arborresearch.com or biancoresearch.com or by emailing Gus Handler directly at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. You can also call Arbor Research and Trading at 1-800-606-1872. Thanks for your time and enjoy the podcast. Welcome everyone to the latest edition of Talking Data. I'm your host, Kristen Radish with Arbor Research and Trading, joined today by our presenter, Jim Bianco of Bianco Research. Welcome, Jim. Thanks for having me. Today, Jim will answer the question, does the Fed's reaction function now include Nick Timoros? Jim, Wednesday's press conference may be unusual as Powell will need to address not only inflation, but also Nick Timro's story about a Fed step down. To get us started today, what is a step down? Okay, so first of all, let's talk about the, the, the history on this. So the first slide we have, and for those of you that are just listening, is Nick Timoros's, uh tweet from Friday, early Friday morning, about 40 minutes before the New York Stock Exchange opened October 21st. So going back about 10 days ago. And he said, the Fed is barreling towards a fourth straight 75 basis point hike at the November meeting. This meeting could serve as a critical staging ground for future plans, including whether or how to step down the 50 basis points in December. The stock market was down on the day, almost 1% when this story hit the Wall Street Journal and he tweeted it out. It rocketed to unchanged within two minutes of its release and finished up three and a half percent higher. And since the release of this story, it's nearly 10% higher from that low on October 21st. So there was an immediate and positive um, reaction to this. We go to the next uh, tweet real quick. This was uh, Timoros on Friday. Uh, And he said, the big question heading into the Fed meeting is about what, if anything, Powell will say about December. Economists say that it is in part because of some ambiguity over the Fed's reaction function around any step down to 50 basis points, even if the estimated terminal rate is rising. So let me decipher all of this. The Fed has going, the Fed is expected at the November 2nd FOMC meeting, which is tomorrow from the day we're recording, to raise rates 75 basis points for a fourth consecutive time. The market has got an 88% chance that that's going to happen. And the Fed has never disappointed the market when it's had percentages that high the day before the meeting. Um, the, so what's unusual about the meeting is, okay, you're going to raise rates tomorrow, but nobody cares about tomorrow's meeting. They care about what are you going to do in December? And so we've got this new term called step down. Will they go from 75 basis points to 50? Now, the question becomes, um, does that really matter? Is that really that important? And on the face of it, it isn't. It doesn't matter. But it is more about what Timro said. It is a critical staging for the future. Is it a signal that the Fed is about done? Is it a signal that the Fed is worried that they've gone too far? Is it a signal that maybe there is a financial problem brewing? Because tangentially to this, we've got Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen talking about buying back treasuries because there's very concern, big concern about liquidity in the treasury market. So it's not, is 50 basis points materially different from 75? It's, does it signal something more? And that's what the markets got themselves all excited about. And I would argue to you that what we're seeing here, and if you look at the, um, you could see this in 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 the percentages. So if we go to the next chart, here's the probability the Fed is gonna raise 75 basis points in November. It is about 88% right now. So like I said, they've never disappointed when the percentages are this high, but look at the next chart. This chart is December 14th, and I highlighted Timoros's uh, tweet, and when it, it was within a minute or two of when it got posted on the Wall Street Journal website. And you could see that the problem, if you assume the Fed raises 75 basis points on November 2nd, what is the probability they raise 75 basis points for a fifth consecutive time December 14th? It was 83% minutes before this tweet hit. It immediately fell under 50% within, within less than an hour. And it's been vacillating around 50% all last week and all the last two days. 
as the market tries to figure out if there's going to be a step down. Now, again, if the Fed wants to start going by 50s, that doesn't mean a whole lot, but it's is that a signal of something else is, is what we're looking at. And this is going to be the question. So Jay Powell's going to talk about the economy. He's going to talk about what they did. He's going to talk about um, you know, their outlook. And everybody's going to say, okay, stop, Jay. What are you going to do in December? So this is a rare instance when we're more worried about the meeting after the meeting than the meeting itself. So we're kind of jumping ahead to the meeting after the meeting. And it all revolves around Nick Timoros, the chief economics correspondent of the Wall Street Journal, suggesting this phrase, step down. So Jim, why does Nick Timoros matter? So he is, he is in the chair that is perceived to be, or maybe not even perceived, that when the Fed has a communications challenge, in other words, that's a nice way of saying, the market's got something wrong uh, and the Fed needs to correct that perception. The Fed needs a source that is credible and that everybody has access to. And that is perceived to be the chief economics correspondent of the Wall Street Journal. That is currently Nick Timoros. Before him, it was John Hilsenrath. Before him, it was Greg Ipp. And before him, going all the way back to the 90s, it was David Wessel. So they've been doing this for 30 years, using the, 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 the Wall Street Journal that when the market has decided something and the Fed's looking and going, nah, that's not quite what we want, or that's not what we think, how do they get the message out? Well, we don't wanna go back to the 70s or 80s when they used to just tell the head trader at Solomon Brothers what they wanted to do, and then they would position and make a gazillion dollars off of it ahead of everybody else. So they want a format, like I said, that everybody has access to. I do, you do, everybody listening to this, the head trader at Goldman Sachs. We all have equal access to WSJ.com. We have all equal access to getting notifications on Nick Timoros's, um Twitter feed. And so we all get it at the same time. This was heightened in June. Remember that in June, um, the Friday, Friday, before the Fed meeting. Fed meetings on Wednesday, the Friday before, the CPI number was a gigantic beat. It was way above expectations. The market started to price in the idea that the Fed might go 100 basis points at the meeting. It's Monday, it's Tuesday, it's the day before. And the market's pricing in like a 30% chance that the Fed might go 100. Nick Timoros comes out with a story saying the Fed is on course to do 75. And it read like, you know, my joke was from the old movie Wall Street, you know, blue horseshoe like 75. That was Gordon Gecko's uh, um, handle in the movie that somebody somebody named Jay might have called Nick and said, Jay, we're only going to go 75 when you go tell the world. And ever since then, and given that lineage, people have perceived him as an extension of the Federal Reserve. So if you go back to this chart that of the December meeting right now, real quick, what you'll see about that is the reaction to him, his tweet saying step down is nearly as big as if you look to the right of the chart is the reaction was to the beat on the September CPI. Only the Federal Reserve chairman can say something and have the market change the probabilities of a Fed move as much as Nick Timoros. Now, I've, I've given the Fed latitude that I get it. If there's a perception out there you need to change, you need to do it in an equitable way that everybody has equal access to that information. Whispering into the chief economics correspondent's ear at the Wall Street Journal to kind of get your message out is at least an equitable way to do it. There are other, remember 10 years ago, Jeff Lacker, the Richmond Fed had to resign because they were leaking information to Medley Global Advisors. Uh, that's not the way to do it, uh, to give certain people privileged access and other people not. But the Fed's communication policy has been so unclear, nobody knows what's going on, that in that vacuum, Nick Timoros has kind of taken on like a vice chairman or chairman type influence on this market right now. I've argued in previous podcasts here and in other venues, the Fed never explains why it is that they're raising 75 basis points every meeting. Oh, they say because they've got to make sure that inflation stays well anchored. I'm, as I've talked about before, I'm not sure that's even a thing. I think it's, you know, it, 
inflation expectations are what they what inflation is. Inflation is eight percent. That's what people think it is. If inflation is two percent, that's what people think it is. People don't think, oh, inflation is eight percent, but I think it's going to two. I don't think that we get that nuanced. So I've always pushed back on this idea about inflation expectations. But more even to the point, if we accept that, well, Jay, what would happen if you weren't raising seventy five? Would would inflation get unanchored as you like to think it would be? Uh, what would happen if you were raising 100? What would happen if you didn't raise at all? What is your outlook for inflation without aggressive policy? Would it be persistently high or not? They don't give that speech. So the market is left trying to understand what it is the Fed's doing. And that's code word for a lot of people don't believe that inflation is a problem. I've shown those charts where the probabilities of the inflation going back to 2%, everybody always thinks it's going back to 2%. That's why we've had variations on this step down theme all year. We had first the pause in May and June, that got dashed by Paul. Then we had the pivot, he dashed that at the Jackson Hole speech in August. Now we've got the step down, it's all kind of the same thing. So yes, it's okay for the Fed to say, look, we need to correct some misperceptions in the market, let's use an equitable source like the chief economist of the Wall Street Journal, I'm sure the FT and the New York Times and CNBC and Bloomberg are all screaming and yelling, what about me? We could be equitable too, but that's the way the Fed does it. Uh, but now in that vacuum that they do not explain what their bigger picture is and that they're hiking 75 and everybody's scratching their head going, why are you doing this? We're going to have a recession. You're going to create a financial crisis that, that Nick Timoros fills some of that void. And now his words, his tweets, his stories take on the meaning or the impact as if they were written directly by Jay Powell. Who knows? Maybe they are. Jim, will the Fed step down to 50 basis points in December? Now, this is going to be the trick for the Fed. In and of itself, as I've hinted before, if they decide to go 50 at the next several meetings, that's not a big deal. But if it is perceived as because the economy is getting close to recession or financial crisis or inflation is peaking and it's coming down and we're now at restrictive territory, then the Fed runs the risk that the stock market gets excited, it zooms up a zillion points, financial conditions ease, everybody gets excited that we're going to get 40% gains in our portfolio in the next year, let's go out and buy a new car, let's go out and spend money and let's bid for stuff and keep inflation high. So he's got to try to thread the needle and say we might go 50 but don't confuse that with a change of policy as we're recording the terminal funds rate that is if you look at the fed fund futures contract what's the highest point on that curve it's 5.03 percent in may of 23 that rounds to five percent but 503 is technically a new high that is the highest, like I said, technically new high and the highest it's been this cycle. The market is still thinking that the Fed is going to take the funds rate to 5% by spring of next year and stay there all year. Now that's not gonna sit well with a bunch of people that want the Fed to back off. So I don't, I, will, he, will he step down to 50? Possibly, but will he leave you with the impression that this is the beginning of the end and now we could start talking about when they're going to stop and when the next ease is going to be as opposed to that you're going to go 50 and then they're going to go to five and they're going to stay at five and rates are going to have to stay high for a long time that's what i think he's going to try and do at this meeting if he doesn't his credibility is in question the core inflation rate is the highest it's been this cycle at 6.6 percent you have said you being j paul said a hundred times you're not going to back off until inflation starts down. So now you're going to back off at a new high. You've dashed every argument that the Fed is going to pause or pivot because you don't want easier financial conditions. Now you're okay if the stock market was to rally three or 400 S&P points uh, from here. So if he was to endorse that and that's what we get, a, night, a giant rally, then we'd have to ask, what were you doing all year with all these rate hikes? Why did you do those and then and what was it about now that says, okay, you've done enough? Is it, you know, and so that's why I don't think he's going to do that. And I think this is going to fall into the camp of pause or pivot that it is the market 
getting excited about something that the Fed's not ready to do. And the last thought for you on this is it also speaks volumes to where the market's eye ahead is. Every time there's a pause or a pivot or a step down or there's any, anything the market can glom onto, buy stocks because this bear market's going to end, the Fed's going to end rate hikes, and we're all going to make 40% because the stock market's going to go right back to the old highs and maybe the S&P 5000 by early 2024. And that's what everybody, this is, an, I admit, an outside the box view. I know you hear everybody's bearish. I think everybody's waiting at night going, when do I pile in for that giant rebound off the bear market so I can make a boatload of money? And that's where I think they are. And that's why I think step down, pause, pivot, elicits these huge reactions in the marketplace only for the chairman to have to knock them down and then they fall apart as everybody unwinds those opinion uh, positions. And I fear that step down is going to get knocked down at least as a policy shift. But if they start going 50, look, if they go 50-50 after, after they raise 75 tomorrow, if they go 50-50 the next two meetings, they're at 5% by the end of January. So that would mechanically make sense. But he also, like I said, I got to emphasize, 50-50 does not mean that the policy is changing. We're going to five and we're going to wait and see. And if inflation doesn't come down, we might even go higher. I think that's kind of the message he's going to leave. And I don't think that'll sit well with the step-down crowd. Well, thank you, Jim, for your thoughts today. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. If you have any questions in regards to Arbor Research, Bianco Research, or Arbor Data Science, you can contact us by emailing Gus Handler at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. Thanks, everyone, and have a great day.